What is happening, ladies and gents? Slaymate here, playing some more Valhalla. It's uh, right after our break on the fifth day. And as you can see, it's cold, 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 cold. And it's time to serve drinks and change lives. It's like my favorite song right there. <laughs> I don't know why, but I like it a lot. Actually, what's my favorite song? That was pretty good. Hmm. Oh. There's an achievement for loading it up with all of one song. Like, just being like, I like this song a lot. <laughs> but I don't know if this is the one for that. You know, might be a little too peppy, or if we even really want to do that. Let's just, you know, let's give it the old, whichever the ones we want. <laughs> Based on, oh, wait, wait, get rid of that one. I want that one in there. Yeah. Ooh, wait, and the assignment. That sounds good. Let's do this. Oh, right. Almost still here. I'm sure it's chilly out there. It's kind of refreshing. Uh, the hobo out there seems like a nice guy. <laughs> Billy Vine? Yeah. He's a cool guy. Very respectful. Apparently he got in some legal trouble, and that's why he's like that. Really? Uh, he could just be a very nice uh, crackhead, though. <laughs> kind of like Gil. I have a cousin that lives like a hobo, actually. Really? It's a bit complicated, though. The problem is his family has tried to get him to live with them, but his pride won't let him escape. I mean, except, oh my god, words, except their help. It's one of those days. Just like every other day. He'd rather live on the streets for some reason. Well, you can't tell with some people, sadly. Uh, why did he become a hobo in the first place? Oh, bad investments and debts. Bank evicted him from his house. Oh. It's a serious problem because he has epileptic attacks, but refuses to take his medication. I just don't get what's up with him. Hi, <laughs> honey. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, it's uh, our belly girl lady. She really needs a different voice. She needs to be just like Gur from. Uh, from Invader Zim, which I could probably do. But I would also probably wake up my entire house, so maybe maybe not in this series. Um, honey, some service here. I'm here, don't scream. Oh! Were you two hanging out at the back of the bar? What kind of stuff were you doing? Just talking. Is that what they call it these days? What do you want? Something soft. Something sweet. Like, no alcohol, please. Uh, wouldn't it be the same if you just grabbed a soda from a vending machine? <laughs> but I like you. <laughs> Do you just like my presence so much? <laughs> sweet non-alcoholic, you say? All right. Dorothy wants something sweet and alcohol-free. There totally is one, by the way. I just don't know what it is. Is it a blue fairy? Maybe. <laughs> you can yell at the screen all you want. This is what I'm making. Mm, you know what? Optional? No. There you go. Here, like you asked. See? You don't get this kind of treatment from vending machines. Unless you're Lawrence. But he has this weird idea that, like, good service is the same as selling lukewarm cans of cola. Uh, Lawrence? Uh, a friend of mine. He's a vending machine. Oh. <laughs> oh, but, um, 
How impolite of me. Hmm. <laughs> I'm lovely, and my name's Dorothy. Like Dorothy Hayes. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm... I'm Alma. The pleasure's mine. Dorothy, you say? Yep. Why? Uh, nothing. I guess I've heard about you before. <laughs> really? What kind of stuff? Tell me. Tell me. Uh, mostly about your, um... Pluckiness. And here I was thinking that was because I'm a sex worker. Uh, so much for trying to be subtle. Hey, I take pride in my job. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Isn't it dangerous? <laughs> I know how to take it myself. Thank you very much. Where do you work, Alma? I'm, I'm a hacker. Really? A full-fledged hacker? Like, oh my god. Not the kind of... Not the kind that sees a computer logged into some account and says, that's hacking, right? Uh, no. Of course not. I've always been curious about how being a hacker works. You just start typing really fast while waiting for something to happen. Uh, no. I can't explain, but I don't know if you'll get it. <laughs> we won't know until you try, right? Last time... I said that I had to jam a plastic replica of a halogen light bulb from a, of a grown man, grown man's ass. It was a success. <clears throat> okay, then uh, let me try to explain, in general, how it works. Let's say I have to retrieve information from a company's database. Okay. First, I do some research on the target, operating system, servers how the information is stored and all that. There have been a couple of occasions where I had to go in on the blind, and uh, but they're an, an exception rather than the rule. First, I secure things from my side. I start working behind proxies, websites, and through other more vulnerable computers I can find on the way. Ah. Uh -huh. After that, I start testing the networks. I go through the basic protocols, try to exploit uh, try known exploits as long as they don't trigger any alarms. Once I've tested the ground, the fun starts. I go through all the security protocols and look to bypass them. Sometimes I have to look deeper into the code for the password itself. I see. Then when I'm finally in, I go and retrieve user privileges. After that I go and try to become a super user and get what I need. Um, like... How do you do that? Well, there are a couple of ways. I can use a pre-made program to hack into an already existing account. I can use info somebody already gave me. But the usual way is using a buffer overflow. Buff. <clears throat> like, what happens next? What happens next? I create a back door in the system before leaving and covering my tracks. You know all about back doors. <laughs> Sex worker. I... Like, I can't... I can't handle it anymore. Alma, hack me. Hack me like you've never hacked anything before. Eh? Make my... Like, make my buffer overflow. Create a back door in me. Escalate your user privileges. Find flaws in my security. <clears throat> Sorry? I got carried away. No shit, what happened? Uh, like, have you seen these movies or books where a couple does something like paint a picture or cook? Uh, but they make it sound like they're having sex instead. Oh, suggestive scenes. Yes. Mm, well, like that whole thing was kind of like that for me. Really? I guess, uh, humans don't really get it because their minds don't upload to networks or anything. But trust me, if you're recording yourself giving a really detailed explanation in a really sexy voice, you'd make millions. Like, like a horny lilium, lilims or an unexploited market. I see. Oh, uh, looks like my ride's here and not you. You're not, no, nope, probably not ever. Uh, your ride? Uh, yeah, my brother-in-law came to look for me. I just got a text that no, none of you saw and didn't make any noise or vibrate. But I must go right now. 
Uh, is it alright to ask that from him? It's okay, I've known him since preschool. It just so happened that he got married to my sister. Uh, hey Dorothy, do you... Oh, do you need a ride? <laughs> oh, she didn't even run with that one. Uh, can you drop me by 3rd Street? Uh, sure, it's on the way. <laughs> Yay! I'll take your offer then. Bye, honey. Later, Jim. Take care. The street seems noisy today. Oh, a client. Hello. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get? Uh... What? He kind of looks like a creeper. I mean... I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the Riddler? Question mark on his forehead? Oh, gross. Um, hmm. Well? Such a small yet comfortable place. Truly an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of a suburban desert. A place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. A nest where everyone from the most pathetic scum to the vilest trash junkie can just sit to kill their insides. Truly, a real persona non grata. That's Latin for mysterious place, by the way. I'm so smart and philosophical and creepy. Right. We got ourselves a Persona Non Grata here. Uh, what do you have then? Seventeen. Excuse me? I said seventeen. Seven plus teen. Uh, what does that mean? What does it mean to you? Uh, just to be sure, seventeen is about the drink you want, right? Only if you want it to be Riddler. So what the hell does this mean? Well, I guess we're gonna go for 17. No, 17, hmm. Seventeen. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's the 17th one. Booyah. You know, I could have just gone to this menu. <laughs> I could have clicked on the first one and skipped to the 17th one. Sort of a bitch. All right. Can we double it? No, it's too big. Can't make a double piano man. That would kill a person. No. I was a little premature on this. I blasted one too many. Story of my life. All on the rocks and mixed. Booyah. Serve it up. How is this a 17? It isn't. You said 17 would only be related to your drink. If I thought it was. And I think it isn't. Oh, you subverted my expectations by taking me literally sneaky. And uh, what brings you here, Mr. Um... I'm Armadillo. Virgilio Armadillo. Virgilio Armadillo. Yep. See? I introduced myself using the Asian order because that's a lot more polite. Like Bond. James Bond. Right. And I came here looking for a otherworldly experience. I was passing by and saw this place is called Valhalla. I wanted to see the souls of resting warriors, the 
the wounded spirits of noble souls. The golden hall full of never-ending banquets. The lively palkries looking over them. Uh, we have some arcade machines on the corner. No, no, no. You're taking me too literally. You see, I'm being poetic. I'm giving a mystical air to a mundane affair. I also rhyme, bitch, all the time. Uh, which is cool. I wanted to see drunk people. I wanted to see waitresses and food. I wanted to see the bar in all of its decadent glory. Well, you're out of luck. Today's been, uh, quite the slow day. Not that I'm very surprised, given how things have been going on the streets, though. Humans are a nasty bunch. That much is true. Making a ruckus coming at each other, coming, coming all over each other, coming inside of never mind. Mm. But that's to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own. I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Oh, yeah? Then give me an example, not zoologist bartender. Uh, well, like I said, I don't know exact details, but I just know that isn't right. If memory serves right, uh, once a lion takes over a pride, every cub born from another lion is killed, or something. <laughs> takes over a pride? You can't take over a pride. Pride is not tangible thing. You need to stop making things up, not to zoologist bartender. But, going back on topic, do you know what the number 17 means? Uh, the atomic number of chlorine? <laughs> in, your, in your face, nerd. No. And, uh, chlorine is not as a name, not a number, you know, chlorine. Oh, number jokes. Uh, the group where halogens are in the periodic table? Stop making up words like halogens, periodic, and table. Okay, then I, I give up. Seventeen is us. Eh? Every human has seventeen pairs of chromosomes. Oh, yeah. I know chromosomes, but not the word table. That number is the whole foundation of you and me. It's 23. What is? Uh, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, not 17. Well, they're both primal numbers. So it's all the same idea. Primal. Oh my god. Goddamn nerds. That aren't very good nerds. Do you anything else? I'd like a single plum floating in perfume, served in a man's hat. Okay. He wants plum floating perfume in a son of a bitch. We actually do have that. Fedora with plum. With perfume and plum. Booyah! Mix it up, bitch. A plum fume. I like it. Here. Ha! You did. Wait. You did. Enjoy. I will. I'll drink this some perfume. Uh, you don't really have to. Yeah. But be silly, you win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender, have you ever thought about death? Uh, how? What if we're already dead? Both of us. What? What tells you I even existed before I entered that door? How can you assure me that this reality 
it's real and we are not in fact in heaven or hell all along. What if everything up to this point is just some stupid story written by an unemployed 20 something in his room in Venezuela? I could punch you to make you feel reality. I don't care about any of that, actually. This, this reality is real enough for me, and that's all that matters. Such a close-minded way of seeing things. You need to get away from the factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start. Uh, how the era has started, it means the Twilight of the Gods in German, by the way. Well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy your new world order. Um, what? A couple of nearby cars exploded, it seems. Oh, hell. It's just too upbeat about cars exploding. <sighs> Let me take a look out the window. Be careful! I see it's all the flashes in the distance. Most likely gunshots. Jill, come here for a second. Uh, what? Uh oh. About five gigaboy gigaboits. About five gigaboits of reports proven that several boy night squads have been used to cover <laughs> illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown anarchist group. We're receiving reports of several units going rogue and using their weapons to hunt down anyone they find on the streets. Several counter-terrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order to subdue the crazed units after a plea from the vice president. We're still waiting for a declaration from Zabatu Corp CEO on the subject, but until then... Oh, things are ugly in the outside and of that bank, it seems. So much ugly, and I'm not talking about just the people. I recommend you stay here tonight. It's too dangerous to even think about going outside. What if they break in? They won't. Even then, the bar has quite the security system. Me with my robo-arm. And I'll be here protecting you, also. As an added bonus. We have to share the same bed, though. Yeah, okay. I guess I'll stay tonight. I'll get you the spare mattress I have. Uh, do you mind sleeping in my office? With me? Uh, no, I guess it's fine. Someone will have to feed four. Good. Until everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have Zanketsu on hand, just in case. Uh, the metal bat with nails? There's nothing I can't bash. It can't bash. Charlie, from Sunny in Philadelphia, told me that. <laughs> Sunny and Philly. Sigh, Gil, four. Hope everything's better by tomorrow. Holy shit. Flawless service bonus. Not granted. I made two mistakes. Bitch. I will straight up stab him. Mmm. Mm-mm. Is that Gil? I didn't even notice. Thought it was another woman. Booyah. Day six. Rise and shine, honey. Good morning. It's 11 a.m., though. What? Uh, that's morning for me on the weekends. <laughs> and any other day? How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them at least. Uh, how so? Zabatsu Corp's president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like they were petrified somehow. You make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out, and it's not really safe yet, but it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. So, not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on edge too. Ah, uh, I wonder if Sai is okay. Uh, should we be worried about Gil? That kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sure that whatever it is that he's doing, he's safe. Dare I say, even safer wherever he is than here. I sure hope so. 
I hope he's cowering in a pool of his own urine. How are we gonna work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take Sunday off. And bang, I mean, oh, all right. Say, do you want me to help you get to your apartment? Uh, actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay then, let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Uh, sounds good. My cat needs to eat. And here we are. A different screen. Uh, home sweet home, thanks a lot. Uh, hey boss, do you wanna hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah, grab a beer, chill out for a bit. Uh, mostly to thank you for helping me, but the other part is because I kind of am in love with you. Sure. Oh, we don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. I did tell you, you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh yeah, you, you did. What worries me is a bit is that the beer always leads to something else. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Vomiting in the corner. Two more beer? Well, I was going to say two. When I was going through the Spanish announcer's table. Uh, but I think we're safe here. Come on in, then. Uh, excuse me. Uh, want one? Oh, sorry, I, I don't smoke. Don't mind me, though. Smoke if you wanna. Thanks. Say, how is the chilly weather treating you? Uh, it gets cold from time to time, but nothing the Kotatsu and the heater can't fix. Oh, right, boss. Uh, you're not very good with cold, are you? <laughs> you know it. Joints get all freezy. Uh, you didn't bring your jacket here, either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold, and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Uh, would you like a sweater or something, or my own skin? I'll tear it off. You can wear it. Oh, don't mind me. I, I insist. I, I have this hoodie uh, from some time ago, and it was too big for me. Oh, well, why buy it, then? It was dirt cheap and also covered in dirt. Right. Wait. Where did you get this one? I, I don't know, some flea market ages ago, why? Uh, nothing. It's just like one I had many years ago. Oh, uh, what happened to it? Too much use. It just, uh, ripped. I see. Uh, you can keep it if you want. I, I never use it anyways. Um, we'll see. Uh, come to think of it, I shouldn't ask a woman her age. Is this a woman? Has this been a dude the whole time? <laughs> How old are you, boss? No, let's... Come on. It's... Uh, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure they referred to her as a female, unless I'm just completely lost it, which I have. <laughs> if you couldn't tell already. I'm eternally 17. Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus you... I'd have to cut your tongue out if you knew. Okay, alright. So she's a girl, because that's the only person who wouldn't answer that age. I'd be like, I'm 40, damn it. Cut the tree trunks. Cut me down. Look at the rings. Something. Uh, let me go change into something more comfortable. Like nothing. Take your time. Uh, say, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of fur uh, glaring in my general direction. Hmm? Oh, that's just four. You know, four. It's a cool name, cat name. Uh, he's just wary of any new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly, though. Just give him time. Uh, he's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat. They usually have green. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because... He was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Uh, back home here, a bear. Ah, uh, I see. Wait, what? Good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. Right. Um, what? Hmm. This picture here isn't something you see every day. What? Are you taking such a sappy pic? No, uh, Framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Who are these? Uh, that's, um, 
the one on the right is uh, Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. Uh, the one on the left is uh, Gabriella, her sister. Huh. Is this pick recent or... Oh, it's actually from like three or four years ago. You look exactly the same. I'm only 27. What did you expect? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. What? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. Yeah, they... Mm-hmm. That They do say that, I guess. I thought it was recent because you don't usually see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. Uh, did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. Uh, let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. Like her legs. We never broke up formally, and I guess I still have feelings for her. Not as many as I have for you, though, boss. I just, you know, went away. Haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to picture you doing such a thing. And you look so happy in the picture. Why have her pick out like that? Or like this, then? I just couldn't get my mind off something that Alma said to me about missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side using them as a pillow mixing your perfume with theirs gently grinding your vagina I mean never mind <clears throat> putting your head on their chest listening to their breathing as they pet your head dozing off knowing they're there watching you protecting you kind of creeping on you while you sleep wanting to sleep with you but you're sleeping so they just kind of gotta wait I don't know I felt nostalgic uh, then miserable I'll just uh, put this away <laughs> I've been meaning to apologize but I feel like it's too late now uh, whenever I go out there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her on the street I just don't know if I could face her again let alone talk to her It'd be a mess. That's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, what's that on the table? I'm a nosy Parker, and I have to look at all your garbage and your junk mail. Quest! Exclamation mark! Looks like an envelope. Ah, uh, it's nothing. Nothing. Uh, now please give that to me. Oh. Oh. All right. I... I saw nothing. Don't worry. Uh, anyways, uh, let's, let's grab some beers. <laughs> Guide me. Hmm, damn. You have lots of beer. Well, the BTC gives me discounts, and the point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. With that, beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Wait. What? Oh, it's a post? Yeah, it's a... A poster, 15 out of 11. I like it. Beer so far. Oh, I can drink whenever I want. Huh? Oh. Um, yeah. Booyah. Beer remaining. Is there uh, any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? Uh, the drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. And besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This one's more of a pilsner. Uh, in English, please. Wait, she owns the bar but doesn't know about alcohol? That's... Okay. This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. I don't know. It doesn't taste like a lighter to me. <laughs> Is this one made with that, um... Oh, what was the name of that base liquid you used at the bar again? Nutri... Nutriogenic... Dichrome... Dichromtricol. No, that's not right. Nutriogenic... Dichromatrol... Lidogenol. Or NDL. Sure, yep. That's a word. It was a supplement or something, right? Uh, it was an experimental fluid. They... Created to replace water when the Maiden Kiss polluted water supplies. Drink. Yeah. Wait. Oh! 
Okay, so I'm 60% of one beer is still left. Okay, alright. I got it. We're good. The effect of pollution turned out uh, to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the PTC still commissioned it for use in bars. Uh, and is this one made with it? Uh, let's see. What? Yep. Here it is, near the end. NDL and cornstarch. Cornstarch? Uh, it served as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I see. And I just realized something. Uh, what's that? You're a nerd, Jill. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Well, there's my alcohol collection if you feel like getting anything else. Those bottles over there. I, I can't afford a fancy fridge or whatever for them, so I have to put them in plain sight. I'm guessing if some authority on alcohol came in here, he'd stab me for crimes against beverages or something. Anyways, many of them are still drinkable. Glug, like that one. I could get you some of the absinthe I brought to the bar if you want. Glug. I gotta open a new one. Ah, so delicious. I'm not an Oscar Wilde kind of person, sadly. I'm more of a Theodore Roosevelt girl. I have a teddy bear in my closet. But I don't think you can drink it. No, what? That's what I... Wait, you do? I'm not ashamed of Dr. Fluff. But it just so happens that I have a cat. <laughs> he would have torn it up. Got all that stuff in out. Oops, and I... Uh, oh, oh, even she feels bad because I skipped the dialogue. Got a drink. <laughs> anyway, beer's fine, don't worry. If you say so. Where'd that collection come from, anyways? You steal it from the bar? <laughs> Calling it a collection is too generous, I think, and no, I didn't. I got it from my grandpa. He made a will where the only thing stipulated was that I got them. Oh, well, that's sweet. Was he an alcoholic? I've already down some of it over the years, though. Half of them have colored water instead of alcohol. I guess you need to be an expert or something to notice the difference. Yeah, I make sure the water is the right color, though. Bottom line, if you want to taste something from it, let me know. Glug. Oh, you're too kind. On a side note, it surprises me you kept that poster of me in the room. <clears throat> and even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know. That doesn't make you uncomfortable, Glug. Ah, uh, if it doesn't make you uncomfortable, then why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face. I'm still wondering. Uh, why you did it, though? Aside from filling an empty spot on the wall, I, I don't really know. I thought it was funny, too. I guess it's like if someone gave you, I don't know, a dildo-shaped trophy or something, and you had it there as a conversation starter. Although no one comes here anyways, so it's kind of pointless. But I do have dildos. Glug. What? No steamy nights of passion? Uh, not since a year ago, I think. I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. Ah, uh, no, nothing of the sort. A different kind of mess. Glug. Open a new one. Uncomfortable mess. Uh, not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Ah, uh, glad to know you. Ah, uh, oh, why am I double clicking for some reason all of a sudden? That's. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> That's what friends are for. Wait, you talk about the poster and compare it to having a dildo-shaped trophy. Did you just call me a dildo face? <laughs> That's what friends are for. Hey, Jill. Where'd you get that black four ball? The cat? Uh, well, that's any black cat or house cat in general. He's actually a stray. Glug. Freaking cats. Love them. I found him in the alleyway near the building. Not long after I moved here, I think. Ah, I see. Uh, it was quite the sight, though. He was covered by all these dogs, but they were keeping their distance. Uh, it was holding his ground, hissing and scratching as much as he could. There was a fried chicken bucket nearby that had some rainwater in it, so I threw the water over the dogs. They ran, and I figured the cat's mom would be nearby, so I left. Then I noticed people looking in my direction as I walked. Turns out the little shit started following me. So you brought him home. 
At first, I wanted to see if I could find him a new home, but having him welcome me whenever I came back was just too much for my heart, so he ended up staying. It was destiny, girl. Just like me being in your apartment. When he came, he was so cute, though. Not like the fat mess that's sleeping on the table. Oh, drink. Hey. You're no spring chicken yourself, you know. <laughs> oh, shit. I actually did that in front of someone else. <laughs> Anyways, so she's voicing the cat, huh? Glug. Don't anyways me. Do you normally speak for your cat like that? Maybe. I wonder if Gil's alright. Subject changer. You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot. <laughs> you can't be hard to read. I mean, you can be hard to read, Glug. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third, he absolutely hates bell pepper. He does? I have seen him even reject food that has been in contact with it. Hmm, man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic to something. Oh, he's not. Man, what a baby. <laughs> I can hear, hear Guild just now, just in the distance. Oh, he was all the pictures. Bug. Um... How did you meet such a guy? Oh, he showed up in the door of the bar. Drunk. Wait, he what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the Leviathan... Wait, nope. Levitation potion. <laughs> right. The levitation potion. It was a slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he just didn't have the money on him. I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave the drinks for free. And after that, something about this is like they're they're getting done with their sentences way quicker than they used to. Uh, he huh? Um, I don't really know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him if he could wash himself, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned. He looked totally different the next day. Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him, so I decided to take him at face value. I judge him from what he did in his employee, and aside from the occasional sudden escapade, yeah, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. Uh, I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time, sometimes literally. Uh, what surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I could take care of myself, and I always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't ignore someone that desperately, that desperate, so easily. I see. Ah, you've made the bar more, the bar more lively yourself, you know. Oh, how so? Glug. Well, with the regulars, you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker. I can't remember her name. Oh, Alma. Yeah, she, she's got some... They are nice. I mean, what? <laughs> I was gonna say Armitage. Uh, she's a nice girl, you know. I don't think she's young enough to be called a girl. <laughs> Says the girl who's eternally 17. In any case, she's really lovely. Uh, when you hear her speak of family, she speaks with such love, her face just brightens up. It makes me kind of jealous that she has such a close relationship with them, to be honest. Oh, you have a bad relationship with your family? Glug. Double glug. Triple glow. <laughs> Not too bad, but... Uh, but back to Alma. I'm really hoping she finds a nice guy to settle with. I mean, she's so bent into finding one, I can't help but want her to succeed, even though she hits on me endlessly and I'm a girl, so that doesn't make sense. Exactly, glug. <laughs> oh, I see. <sighs> um, There's also that sex worker bot girl thing. Uh, Dorothy. She intrigues me, though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years. And she seems pretty giddy. And not like she likes a job, but rather that she takes to it with such childish excitement. I've kind of noticed that, too, but then again, Lilim can be weird. You think? Lilim operates some really foreign logic. 
I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. If they lose an arm, they can reattach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions like fear or love, but they are different. Like a different culture, if you must. Hmm, I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy is a DFC-72. It's a social interactions model or something. Um, Lilim get positive reinforcements straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so... I'm guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Hmm, that's interesting. The name Lilim is a bit weird, though. Is it? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls or... But Lilim doesn't convey the image of automations. Aton... Automatons. Jeez. <laughs> Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Uh, bot is akin to calling them retarded and doll is like calling them fake. Oh, well, thanks for the advice. Um, that aside, do you know why they're called Lilim? As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. Uh, Lilim are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. Glug. Oh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, what do you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Glug. Oh, don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne, and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. This glare. See? Like that. Glug. <gasps> it's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feel silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? Um, not at all. But my little sister's big fan of the reruns. Uh, back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything, from the dolls to the costumes to the lunch boxes. It didn't help that it was one of those shows uh, that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once. They were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. How the show's pretended jewels hating your job because it invited enemies. What? How the show presented jewels hating her job because it invited... Okay, I get it now. I just, I don't know, read it weird. Glug. <laughs> and yet still found solace in... Trying to be a role model? Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when she transformed. I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kid's show, even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards and body image. Challenging as fuck. Whoa, you got excited there. And that's just the problem. Back when I was obsessed with Jules, I sang the songs, dressed like her. I could even recite full chapters. <laughs> Something tells me you still can. <sighs> That's beside the point. It was nice while I was in elementary school, but I went to middle school, and what a surprise, tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against that, but they murdered someone. What? That sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune of that song or that show mocking me. Anyways, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me, him and his friggin' dog. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. And yet it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? Well, when I was a toddler, I was uh, the kind to always fight with bigger kids, uh, bigger kids than me. When puberty happened and I became the Merriam-Webster's defini Merriam definition of shallow jerkwad, around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was and went on to become what I am today, or who I am today, a badass. And the less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. 
Should we have a total of six beers? <laughs> I'm going to get to the point where I can't speak anymore if I have too many more beers. Um, hmm. We'll open one more. One more! Uh, so, Jill, what kind of guy was your grandpa? The one who left you all the drinky drinks? Ah, uh, he was rough around the edges. The kind of guy that means well, even if he says otherwise. Glug. He seemed to have a soft spot for me, though. One moment he was congratulating my dad by berating him a little. And the next he was playing with me. My dad worked a lot, and my mom was always traveling. So I spent most of my childhood with him. Can I ask how he died? Oh, he didn't. I uh, keep him in the closet. I mean, of old age. My dad says his last words were something like, effing scientists creating talking manne mannequins, but they still can't let you upload your brain. Uh, why the question? I'm just curious about you. Really curious. Sexually. I just realized that even though we see each other almost every other day, or every day, I know very little about you. Oh. Uh, from what you tell me, though, it seems your grandpa's personality rubbed off on you a bit. I've heard that one since I was a kid, actually. Ugh. Uh, you know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. Uh, what kind of people do you have in it? Oh, well, keep in mind, you're included in this circle, too, so... Any insults you hurl will apply right back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time, a red-headed, glasses-wearing gun nut called Iris. Uh, the one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh, glug. It's called N1RB Anna. Nirvana. Nirvana. Wow, that took me a second. <laughs> uh, and if you thought this city was dangerous, you should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to F with. And uh, means it's an annex to another business. Uh, what does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved uh, the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened Nirvana B. Nirvan B in the hotel instead. Plug. A weird decision. I believe she said she wanted a place away from all the noisy rich tourists that go to that hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. <laughs> woman cave. I want to get in your woman cave, girl. What? That aside, let's see. Friends. Friends. Um. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, and uh, also my old partner from when I was with the Neo Sound San Francisco Police Force. Good old Lexi. I should give her a call sometime. Wait, you were in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop assistant, attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still don't see my face from time to time on websites. Aside from that, uh, b b b b b I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. Uh, what about you? Uh, I guess I have acquaintances here and there. Uh, back at home and college, I, I went out a lot. But I felt more like going out was a the pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Gil, Jill, Gillian, Jill, Jill Gillersons. My closest friend since moving here is, uh, Alma. Oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but, uh, that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. And, you know, he's a cat. Ah, last one. <laughs> hey, a cat's fine too, you know. Uh, hey, boss. What will we do when the bar closes? Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll take a friend's offer working with her. I was also thinking about going back home and helping with things there. Or maybe going traveling for a while. I see. Oh, but don't worry. Bureaucracy's slow as F. So they won't close the bar for quite a while. Better enjoy being there while you can. Glug. Yeah, maybe. Glug. 
Will you be visiting me in whatever bar I end up working in? I have to bone a bit with the guy that supervises the bar I'm planning to get you transferred to. Wait, what? I'd go there, even though I have virtually no reason to. With you there, I'd have something pleasant to look forward to. Um, you're sending me to someone you have problems with? Well, if I have to trust another bar owner, it's certainly him. Yeah, he's actually a pleasant boss, from what I've seen. The fact that he and I have a tendency to go to each other's throats is an unrelated matter. I'll trust you on that one, Glug. And don't worry, maybe I can get you a bracelet made out of wood pieces from the bar's counter or something. Uh, we'll see. Hey, I'll tell you what. When the bar closes, let's both take a vacation. Go on a trip. That'll clear your mind a bit. Yeah, maybe if it's to a nude beach. Oh, I didn't get to finish my sixth goddamn drink. You sons of a bitch holes. The next day, they woke up and found each other in the loving embrace of one another. The cat was snuggled on top of their chest, purring into their faces. It was a good day. Chapter 2. Mirage, or some word. <laughs> a marriage. Um, um, rum, rum, rum. Jill is curious about Daruma. A Daruma. A Daruma sandstorm she saw. Getting one will prevent her from becoming too distracted. Have a nice day. Oh, really? What is a Daruma? Cracked Daruma. I want to buy a cracked one. Fine. Son of a bitch. Alright. Let's see. How long has it been? It has been about an hour. So I will thank you guys for watching this insanity. And as always, we will see you next time.